Father, we just ask right now that the glory of heaven would just begin to fall in this room like rain. Just take a deep breath. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need a renewal of the Holy Spirit today in our hearts. In our, we need to re, you to renew our minds with your word. We need you to renew our spirit and our soul right now. Lord, heal us. Heal our mind, soul, our will, our emotions. Heal us, Jesus, tonight. We thank you, Father. We ask, God, we give you permission. We repent for anything that would stop you from, from healing us. <laughs> and we ask you, Lord, would you heal us tonight? Would you heal me tonight? Heal my heart. Heal my soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just give you all glory and praise and honor. For your name is high above all names. Thank you, Lord. You are the only one. Who can we call upon but the name of the Lord? Who can we call upon but your name? Your name is high above all things. You're a strong tower that we run into and are glad. We are. We rejoice because we can run into you, into that strong tower. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's just lift our hands and say thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Holy is your name. Holy is your name. Oh, word, would you speak to us tonight? Word of God, speak to us tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and all praise and all honor. Name above all names. Thank you, Lord. Just say who he is to you. Just say who he is because he is the healer. He is the one we love. He is the one. He is the one, the soon coming king. He is the mighty God. He is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Just say who he is to you. You are everything. Jesus, you are everything. You are everything. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you. Thank you, Lord. 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 I just sense that tonight we should read uh, Psalm 34 together. Um, could we read that out loud? And um, Oh, my goodness. I shut my eyes and everybody came in. Glory to God. <laughs> Maybe I should shut my eyes more. <laughs> but you're welcome on the front seat, too. Come on. I will not bite you. But let's, um, let's, uh, and I won't embarrass you. Let's read Psalm 34. I have the New King James Version up here. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Lord. And let's just read it together. I'll give you a couple seconds to get that. And if you don't have notes yet, um, does everybody have notes? If you don't have notes, put your, you got them. You, oh, glory to God. <laughs> That's so good. It's so good to see you guys. Welcome. We're glad you're here tonight. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Thank you. Does anybody need notes? Is everybody good? Oh, you guys do. Kristen, would you bring a pair? Is she going to bring you some? Yes. You got, okay. How uh, many? Two. Two. Two, yeah, three, maybe just bring just bring two or three with you. All right, are we ready? I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. All right, let's say it together. And you can stand if you want. You can sit if you want. You don't have to stand. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Listen right now. Father, tonight we ask that you deliver us from all our fears. 
And we thank you, Lord, when we call upon your name. Here's our promise that you will deliver us. And we say yes, Lord, right now. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Let's just say, Father, we thank you right now for the angels that camp round about us. We give you glory and praise and all that concerns us. We thank you, Lord, that you send your angels right now. You commission. I have to tell you, last week we were praying as Jandy here. Yeah, we were praying for Jandy back there and her father is in hospice and she can't go. And I just have to say again that it was so classic because I can feel the presence of angels when they're around me. And But this was hilarious because... Um, I was just praying and I wasn't saying anything about it and I kid you not that angel was like I'm right here send me and I just got to chuckling because I thought he is not going to be denied this Amen. this blessing Amen. of going to your father and helping during this time and so we can we know that we can, when we call upon the name of the Lord he hears our cry yeah. he will send help yeah. thank you God Amen. who do we call upon Jesus. Oh, but this Jesus will send help and we don't have to we, we don't have to worry about it they go in unaware nobody knows they're there <laughs> except the babies they know they're there okay <laughs> and the little ones they know oh taste and see oh well let's say it again the angel of the Lord the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them oh taste and see that the Lord is good Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no one to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life? and loves many days that he may see good keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit depart from evil and do good seek peace and pursue it the eyes of the lord are on the righteous his ears are up on those who cry or open to those who isn't that so good the eyes of the lord are upon you the ears of the Lord are listening. We don't have to be. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Praise God. The face of the Lord. Okay, where is it? The face of the Lord is against those who do evil and cuts off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Ed, I want you to hear that. Okay? Anybody who's lost recently, okay? The Lord is so near. The Lord is near you. The Lord is near when we have a broken heart. Um, and say such who have a contrite spirit. If we don't have a proud spirit, but we have a humble spirit, the Lord is near. How precious is that? This is the one who, here we are, the one he loves. Here he is, the one we love. He's here with us tonight. We thank you, Lord. Okay, many are, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones. <laughs> Not one of them is broken. Glory to God. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Glory to God. We thank you for your word. We give you glory for your word. And we say your word is true today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we give you all glory and praise and honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right. I'm encouraged already. Praise the Lord. All right. In your, in your notebooks or in your notes, turn to page 28. 
And we are going to talk tonight about um, the rapture and what happens when Jesus comes. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was taught about the rapture, I was taught, uh, my understanding was, and this was from multiple teachers, it wasn't just one, but I always understood that when the rapture happened, I would go away somewhere, and the, end, the earth would just, that would be the end of it. There was nothing else that would concern me on the earth, and um, it was over, basically, right? But actually, now we know, <laughs> as we study this out, that really things are just beginning. We are at the very beginning of what is going to be the most glorious time of the future. <laughs> I can't say history because it's not history yet. Although the Lord has already has it planned out. So it's his, his story. So we just give him glory. And we want to, so we want to define the rapture from Jesus's uh, eyes, from his word, from what he talks about and what he says about the rapture. And so we're going to go through um, the word of God tonight defining it, understanding, well, trying to understand. Now, remember, we're looking at future things. And so we look forward, just like they looked forward to the cross, right? They think about the Old Testament. Here they were in the Old Testament. They prophesied this Messiah was coming. And they, they looked forward to this Messiah coming. But some of them missed it because they thought it, a king was coming. But there was, a, there was this thing, when, uh, when I learned about Bible prophecy, I learned it this way. There were two mountains of prophecy, and they looked forward, and they saw this prophecy, but they saw the, the mountain behind. I used to live on a mountain uh, right up here on, um, uh, across the highway, across 93. I forget what that mountain is called right now. But anyway... Um, one day, we lived there like three years. Okay, one day, I'm driving up to my house, and I look up, and I just thought there was one big mountain back there. Okay, that was just all my, my thought. Well, I, I'm driving up, and I'm looking up at the mountains, and the mountains are going like this. And I'm like, oh, there's two mountains there. I thought it was just, well, I was seeing one dimension. Right, I was seeing it all in one dimension, but then all of a sudden I was seeing it in three dimension, and it was like, oh, there's more than one, and so then, so then I'm like, oh, so, well, duh, of course, that's how it is all over the place, right? I mean, any mountain you look at, there's more than one mountain, and then sometimes there's a great valley or a chasm between, right? So when the prophets in the Old Testament, they looked forward to this mountain of prophecy to see this Messiah come, they were looking forward and they were seeing this king coming. And they thought it was going to be that king, this king, this one that was ruling and reigning. But it wasn't. You know, the disciples were like, okay, when Jesus, when are you setting up your kingdom? Now you grew up, you came as a baby, now you grew up, now when are you going to set up your kingdom? And he, Jesus is like, it's not, oh well, yeah, just hang on. Because there's this great chasm between when he came as a baby, when he came as a lamb, but he's going to come soon again, Hallelujah. and he's going to come as a what? Lion. As a lion. And he's going to come with a scepter in his hand. And that's what we look forward to, because he's going to rule the earth with an iron scepter. And so every, I just want you to remember that every evil thing that we are experiencing now is going to be destroyed by this reigning king, this lion, who's going to come back and roar and destroy the works of the enemy Hallelujah. across the planet. And that's the goal of the book of Revelation. That's the goal of the rapture. That's the goal of the whole thing. It's not for me. It's not my, my time period. It's not my plan. It's... My plan would be, Jesus, deal with it now, and let's get out of here, right? Yeah. But that's not how he does it. It's his plan, and his plan is perfect. Amen. And he's going to come back. He says, when I come back, I'll come back. You will know the times and the seasons, and I will help you. I will be there with you. Thank you. But there will be one day, there's going to be some difficulties, but I will be there with you. 
But then I'm going to, one day I'm going to come back and I'm going to return. And that is what the rapture is. And that is what the rapture, we're going to talk tonight about what the rapture is all about. Because it's not about an escape mechanism for me. It's about what Jesus' plan is. Okay, so let's look at that, okay? All right, chapter on, on your, in your books, let's look at the top of the page. It says, it's 1 John 3, and I'm going to read it out loud. Look with wonder at the depths of the Father's marvelous love. My goodness, we can stop there. The marvelous love that the Lord has lavished upon us. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. The reason the world doesn't recognize who we are is that they don't recognize him, right? Okay, beloved, we are God's children right now. We are all God's children. However, it is not yet apparent what we will become. We have no idea what these things are to come. We have, we think we know. It says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. What has pre he has prepared for us, okay? So is he's the word... The world doesn't, or beloved, we're God's children right now. However, it's not apparent right now what we are going to see. What's, what, when it is finally made visible, we will be just made just like him. Amen. For we will see him as he truly is. Hallelujah. And we will, all who focus their hope on him, will yes. always be purifying themselves just like as Jesus is pure. That is our goal, okay? That is our goal. That is his goal for us, is to that we will be like him. Okay, Amen. when Jesus met, with the, Jesus met with the disciples regularly um, after he died, when he died, then he was resurrected, right? And he met with the disciples regularly. When we are raptured, I want you to think about what Jesus did. The struggle of our life and our flesh, our flesh and bones, will be over. We will be victorious over sin, corruption, temptation, and death. We will be like him. That is the purpose of the, of the rapture. Why do I need to be changed? Why, why on earth do I need to be changed from this flesh? Why can't I be with Jesus in his kingdom to be like this? Well, I want you to turn right back to page 27. And I want you to look at the top of the page. And somebody read that scripture for me. Flesh and blood. When the trumpet sounds, we will be changed. And here's what it says. Flesh and blood. Who would read that for me? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption. We shall not all sleep. But we shall be changed in a moment at the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound and the dead saints will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Okay, so tell me, why can't I just go to heaven like I am with my flesh and blood. Flesh and blood, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You have to be born of the Spirit. Neither does what? What's it say? Corruption. Because what? We are all corruptible. Uh, the way we are right now. And death corrupts us, right? That's what? The body will rot. The body will rot. It will corrupt. But... We will not see corruption, right? No, we will not all sleep, but we will be changed. How fast will we be changed? In a, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Is that so good? Yes, it is. That's better than surgery. That's better than surgery. What do we say? What is it when we die? What is death? We breathe out in this world, and we breathe in in the next it's that quick present with the Lord we breathe out we breathe in here we are with the Lord I tell you I would take that any day over laying paralyzed in bed or whatever I, I would be with the Lord I, I already told my husband if I get sick or paralyzed or something just go dump me at Bethel <laughs> until I get healed. If I don't get healed, they can bury me. I just said, put me out, wrap me up in a blanket, and send me on. Because I don't, I don't have any desire to stay 
any longer than the Lord needs me here. Amen. But I do want to stay every second that he wants me here. Because you and I all have a job to do. Amen. We want to accomplish everything that the Lord wants us to accomplish. Right? Yes. I want to stay not one second longer than that. I'm like, come on, let's get it done. <laughs> right? I tell, I tell you, I am, it, is, it is angering to me. Hard, very difficult for me right now in this church. We've got one end done with the construction. We've got this end basically done. But we want to build a whole other thing. So I can't invest a whole lot of money here and build a whole lot in here. Because we want to actually do a bunch of work. Uh, like teardown work. And... <laughs> And this summer, I wanted to do the sanctuary. And it was just all I could do. I was, my, my board was here one night, and I'm like, okay, listen, guys, I want to tear out the roof. I want to put in new lights in this place. I wanna, and they were like, no, just be patient. Because I want to get it like I know the Lord wants it. I want to get to the next thing, and I want to get it accomplished. But you know what? We have to, and this, thank God I have a good group of people that tell me, no, <laughs> you have to wait. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And things are happening. Can I say things are happening? Things are moving along. But we have to wait on God's timing. Yes. Is his timing perfect? Yes. yes. How many of you have ever thought, Lord, you are late again? <laughs> Is he ever late? Because when you turn around, you go, oh, that was perfect. Right? It's true. That was perfect. So it's us, if we can be patient for his timing. And, and can I say, those of us who have people we love who are not in yet, if we can just be patient... Because I tell you, they will have a dream. They will have an experience. Amen. They will have an encounter yes. of the Most High God that they can't explain away. They may not tell you about it, but they can't explain it. But it's dealing with their heart. Right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just have to... How many of you ever really gained a lot because you were hugely successful and you were having a fantastic life and you... Did you gain? Where do you gain? When you're really down in the. <laughs> you're like, oh, oh. Always. Always. You're, yes. You have to have the character to sustain what's going to be coming your way. And if you just get answered prayer, and just you like go to fall over, they yeah. knock down because your foundation ain't secure. Isn't that the truth, Alex? Mm -hmm. That is the yeah, truth. You know that you need it. Yeah. In this valley, we're becoming more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the valley, we through become more valley. like Jesus through the valley. <laughs> don't, you know, I, the, let's, look, we want this whole thing to be over, don't we? Yeah. We want all the stuff to just go away. Mm -hmm. And how many of you have gotten stronger during this time? Mm -hmm. Not just your immune system. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> but we've, we've gotten, we have gotten stronger. I think actually... If we saw ourselves before this, and we saw ourselves now, we would go, oh, look what you did. Look what you did. One day we'll see it all, and we'll understand better. But the Lord is shaping us now. Amen. And whenever I go, Jesus, let's get through this. Let's get this done, please. I remember one time when I was going through an, a time of betrayal, five years of betrayal. And it was everybody I... My dearest friends, I had three dear friends for 15 year plus friends. I mean, these were long term friends. And, we, and there was a time in there where they had, they betrayed me over and over and over and called me names. <laughs> I mean, it was mean. Not only that, I had a family member that did the same. And I remember the Lord was teaching me a great lesson. Don't feel sorry for me. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I remember thinking, Jesus, deal with my heart. Something else would happen, and I would go, Jesus, deal with my heart in this because I see that um, I want to answer back. I want you to vindicate me now. And I repent right now because I don't need to be vindicated. Help me not to 
I got told I was number one by some driver today. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, bless him, Jesus. Because um, we want the blessings of heaven to fall upon him that he'll come to Jesus. Because he's telling me I'm number one. But really, he's number one on the list now. Jesus is dealing in his heart because he, you know, because he came across my path. And what was really funny is I let him in and then... <laughs> He wouldn't let me in. And so, but he, he got mad at me. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture. But it's okay because I'm praying for him. You know what? Sometimes the Lord has to basically hit you over the head so that you can really pray for that person. Nobody may be praying for that person. So I need to pray. And, and so, but there's times when we think, God, I didn't want that to happen. Or God, get me out of this. So when I was going through that time of betrayal, I remember on my way home one night, I rolled down my window because something else had happened, some another betrayal. Rolled down my window and said, I've already learned this lesson. <laughs> Let's move on. Because I was serious. I was like, I was hurt once again. And I was like, wait. I've already repented so many times. Like, because you know what? I wasn't worried about their heart so much. I was worried about my own heart. But when I got home, I said, You're right. I need to repent for that. That little piece I need to repent for is like an onion. It was like being peeled and then everything being exposed in my heart. Mm -hmm. And it hurt like fire. I wanted to rip. There was one point I wanted to rip my skin off. That's how bad it hurt. I was just like, God, help. But I came out of that. After I came out of that, and it took time, came out of that saying, I am so glad I didn't miss that lesson. Thank you. That million lesson that you taught me over five millions. I mean, there were so many tests. It seemed like every day was a new test. But the Lord was talking to me the whole time. He'd say, do you see your heart? Do you see your thoughts? Do you see what you're, do you see you're trying to answer for, you know, do you see you're trying to, I don't want to use the word vindicate. Do you see you're trying to make yourself look better? Because I was. I was trying to stick up for myself. But I really shouldn't have. And the Lord was trying to show me. Because, and the other thing I realized at the end of that was I was just participating a little tiny bit with the betrayal that Jesus had. Exactly. Because everybody betrayed him. Everybody left him. And so then at the end I was like, because the Lord showed me his word, <laughs> and I went, Oh, this is what you're doing. But it's that scripture that says, I'm participating yes. with the suffering of Jesus. Well, that made it worth it all. All of a sudden, that was okay. Because then I realized, this is just temporary. But can I say, if you're going through a test or a trial right now, this is temporary. This is a 70 plus year span of time that we live on this earth, right? We, if we're blessed, we have 100 years. Mm -hmm. Praise 120. God. 120. <laughs> I don't know if I want 120, but I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> we want to go that far if we can. If the Lord wants us here, we want to do it. We, we absolutely say yes to the Lord. Rock on, Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go, yeah, go for it. We'll all tell him to go for it. <laughs> tell us what it's like when you get to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> but this period of time is temporary. That's right. Everything that you're going through is a temporary test, but it has eternal benefit. It has eternal consequence. It has eternal um, reward. And the things that look like they're going to be rewarded here on earth aren't. Mm -hmm. And the things that don't look yeah, like they should be rewarded, changing diapers, cleaning the floors. I spilled tomato soup back there on the floor. The Lord saw it. I was scraping it up. The Lord sees that. And he rewards. And it's an eternal reward. The things we'll get to heaven will say, oh. You know, I was so embarrassed about that. And the Lord's like, oh, honey, I was so <laughs> blessed by what you did. And we're going to go, really? <laughs> because
because he loves you. Mm -hmm. He loves your situation. He loves who you are. He loves your effort. He loves your hard work, things that you are the only one that sees. You're the only one that sees it. Nobody else is looking. But he loves what you're doing. <laughs> right? And it's True. eternal. It's forever. I just want to say that's for you, Kristen. Everything you do with those children, you think about it. It's so huge. It has eternal consequence. It has eternal reward. Everything. The way you love who you're living with, the way you love the person that tells you you're number one, it's eternal. So don't, so don't turn around and do the same thing back to them, <laughs> even if you want to, because then it's all a wash, you know, and that, re that reward's gone. <laughs> but do the hard thing, because guess what? You have Jesus, and they don't. So we got to get our big boy pants on, right? Yeah. I got Jesus, and I want you to have Jesus. So I'm going to get my big boy pants on. Okay. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither can corruption. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment at the ha what trumpet? The last. The last, the last trumpet. <laughs> Glory to God. Okay, so we just went through the Blow seven seals. Blow that trumpet in Zion. We went through the seven trumpets right here. Or the seven seals, I'm sorry. Seven seals. And then we went through the seven trumpets. And it says, at the last trumpet. So right there at that last trumpet, when that trumpet sounds, the dead and the dead saints will be raised. Those who have already gone on. If I'm already in the ground, I'm going to go up first. We get to go first if we died, right? That's an honor. <laughs> we'll take it. But if we're still here, we will meet him in the air. But it says the dead saints will be raised incorruptible. In other words... I will be raised to be like him. I, you cannot, no longer will I be in temptation. I want you to think about the things of the fall. The, I will no longer be tempted. I will no longer be, even think of lies because it's not even possible anymore. Yeah. I will not be corruptible anymore because I will be like who? Jesus. I will be like Jesus who is the perfect man who worked yes. on, walked on this earth and who will come back as the perfect man, yes. Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah. And he said, I am the son of man more times than he ever used. I am the son of God because he <laughs> loved being the son of man. Yes, he he loves being like us yes. and he loves this earth. So here we go. So if the plan is not about us, uh, it is about us, but it's not our plan. It's his plan. And we want his plan to take place during the rapture. Okay. Amen. Here's what's going to happen next. Okay. The second coming. Here's what it's going to look like. When Jesus returns, middle of page 28 in your notes. The second coming describes what Jesus does when he permanently comes back to earth. The rapture, so we're defining words here, describes what happens to the church, to us, when Jesus appears in the sky. Jesus' second coming, by definition, is a coming to earth the second time. It's not merely for a brief appearing in the sky. Wouldn't it be sad if it was a secret and we were the only ones who saw it? Oh, yeah. The people who really need to see it are those that don't know him. Are those that don't know him. And those evil people yes. that are corrupting this and destroying yeah. the earth. I want you to think about that because we've been told... You know, this car will be unmanned when we're, I'm gone. No, everybody's going to know why that car is unmanned because there's somebody up there going, taking his saints up there, and we're going to describe what that's going to look like. It's not merely for a brief appearing in the sky, but his coming is going to be to accomplish a long-term mission on the earth. This is not... One second, he, you know, Jesus could, I'm sure he could come back to earth and he could, 
he could clap his hands, you know, clap on, clap off, and everything would be perfect, right? Amen. But he has a better plan. Amen. Right? Yeah. He's not just going to snap his finger. And guess what? He needs you. That's right. He needs you. And he's not just going to do this immediately. He's gonna, he says, ah, I want my people to be with me. I want them to help me. Okay. Yeah. Not just for a little bit. It's a long-term mission. Some think of the second coming of Jesus only as consi consisting of the rapture of the church. As if Jesus appearing in the sky is only to catch up his people, that they all return to heaven with him. How many of you grew up believing that? That's what I grew up believing. Okay. But there's a bigger purpose, a greater purpose. The rapture will begin first, then the second coming procession will begin. And here's what Matthew 24 says. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so also so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. The word coming in the above scripture is translated from the word parousia. Parousia. Jesus is the parousia king. And this is a technical term signifying the second appearing of Jesus. The term was never described to des describe when he came as a baby in the manger. It was never used then. Because Jesus knew there were two mountains. Yeshua knew. And, and there he was coming as a baby. And then he was going to come again. And the second time he's coming as a parousia king. Parousia originally was the official term for a visit by a person of high rank, especially a king. The arrival meant that the king would have a permanent presence in that kingdom from that time on. So here's what, here's what Jack Hayford says. The glorified Messiah's arrival will be followed by a permanent residence with his glorified, that's us, who have been raptured, who have been changed to be like him, right? We've been changed to be like him, so we're glorified, and, and, we'll be ra and his raptured people. So who will be left here on earth that is not changed to be like Jesus? These are the people who will be left. The redeemed will be raptured during this Jesus, during the worldwide procession in the sky. The reprobates, the reprobates are those who took the mark of the beast. They will be judged, many killed, and many executed. Listen, don't ever take the rap mark of the beast. We have just watched this um, whole thing with the, the vaccination where you can't, we, for a long time, we couldn't buy or sell without a mask, right? Then you can't, then it's getting more and more. You won't be able to buy or sell. I'm wondering if very soon they're going to say you cannot fly if you don't have a vax. It's, we're getting real close. Where do you want to do that in yeah. Europe? Yes. So it's getting very close. But next, I mean, we can watch and, and they'll start saying, okay, now you can't buy or sell. You can't go in the grocery store. They will not let you through the grocery store if you don't have a vax. Okay, so I want you to know. <laughs> We're watching these things. Now, is the vaccine the mark of the beast? No. I don't believe it. I don't believe it yet. But can I say this is like the closest thing we've ever seen in our lives? Mm -hmm. Oh, by far. By far. Mm -hmm. And there are people who say it is the mark because of the, the graphene and all of that that's being put in their bodies. Yes. But we believe this is, I believe right now we are looking at a birth pain. Okay, but that doesn't give us much comfort because this is a hard birth pain, right? Yeah. Though we know there's, there's a baby coming, right? When you have a birth pain, yeah. there's a baby coming. And that's yeah. what we're looking forward to is the baby. Okay, so the people who will be left here after the rapture takes place will be the redeemed who are with the Lord. We are with him, but the reprobate will still be on the earth. Um, the ones who took the mark of the beast, they'll be here. Many of them will be killed because we'll talk about the mark of the beast. One night we'll talk, we'll spend a lot of time on it. But the mark of the beast comes with a plague or a pandemic. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so it's very fascinating because it says they will have boils. They will, it will be a horrific way to die. So if you're going to take the mark of the beast, you're going to die anyway. And it will be an eternal death. So don't take the mark. And let me say, the right now... The vac many are taking the vaccine because they're like, I cannot support my family if I can't work. So they're taking the vaccine. The, it will be more so with the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast, they're going to come out and say, if you take this mark, you will never get sick. If you have a sickness now, if you have cancer, if you have MS, you're going to be made well. The mark of the beast is going to look like a wonderful thing. But can I tell you, you will die, and you will die an eternal death. You will live for a while. 
But how long is the tribulation? Seven years. Seven years. Seven, so, so how many days is the first three and a half? 1360. 1360 days, the first three and a half years. How long is the second half? 1360. 1360. And then there's another 30 days tagged on the end. Okay? So can you make it 1300? Can you make it 2600? 2700? Can you do it? One day at a time. And who will provide our food? The Lord. The Lord. Never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed bacon bread. Yes. Amen. Amen. Even if he has Amen. to sustain us with manna. He Amen. 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 Can Amen. I believe Amen. that? Look at this. It says the sparrow doesn't fall to the ground Amen. apart from how much more valuable Amen. are we than the sparrow? Because Amen. He, we That's were true. redeemed with something greater yes. than silver or gold, but the precious blood of Jesus. Precious Amen. blood of Jesus. Amen. He's, Amen. yeah. And yes. if I die during that, well, I'm present with the Lord. He, likes the death of his <laughs> he loves the death of his people. Is there any loss in that? No. I'm telling you, we are in a win-win situation. What do we do? We just love the Lord until we die. And his grace is sufficient. His for grace the day. is sufficient. I have read stories of people who have fasted, people who have been in solitary confinement, had no food, no way to get food have fasted the entire time came out better than yeah. before and alive <laughs> daniel though you know the birds can bring food i tell you the lord will multiply i've watched him do it in my own home i've or watched him do it on the mission field he'll sustain us himself we are we just have to build ourselves up in the word of god now Amen. and strengthen ourselves knowing that the Lord who loves us will take care of us Amen. and not be yeah. what? Fearful. Don't be afraid. Because yeah. the right. second you begin to participate with fear, the second that spirit of death, that spirit of fear will come and to overtake you. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to die. That's what happened here with this whole thing. If the media would have shut up, mm -hmm. but they were, you know, everybody. We're going, you're going to die if you get there. I mean, that was basically the thing they were saying. And that wasn't, that was a big lie. But it, boy, it put the spirit of fear out. We have prayed in this place. We have commanded the spirit of fear to go. And we still, in the name of Jesus, if you have any fear right now in your own heart, just Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we command. I command, yes. you say this to your, yourself, I command the spirit of fear to go out of my life in Jesus' name. We will operate in the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. Right again, one more time. I will, I will operate with the spirit of uh, power, <laughs> of love. And of sound mind, I will make wise decisions. I, if I'm in a spirit of fear, I will make horrible decisions. If I'm in a spirit of, right? If I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get anything. I'm not, you know, I can't get what I need. That's why they ran yeah. on the stores and... Right. And, and they, they didn't people. even need as much yeah. as well. No, no. And <laughs> we, all, we all had plenty. Yeah. Nobody in here starved. We all had... Plenty of toilet paper, plenty of everything we needed. We were all good, right? God helped us. We were so blessed. But they told us we needed certain things, and we didn't. So I'm telling you, we don't need to listen to the lies of the enemy, but we better be listening to the Spirit of the Lord, because the Lord will tell us what we do need. I'm like, Lord, do I need to be buying now? And he hasn't told me yet. And so I keep waiting, Lord, what do I buy? You know, show me if I need to buy something. And I will buy it if he shows me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey him. I want to be very quick to obey him. He's revealed to me that all the Costco stops are not going to save anybody from what's coming. Oh. And so I can prepare in the physical and it will all be lost. Yep. And that what we're headed for is only something he can sustain us. Amen. That's so good, Heather. I agree. I just, I mean, I can see us making soup on the out on the corner because we have some sort of a gas thing we can hook up. And there being so much that we're feeding the entire neighborhood. And it just doesn't run out. I mean, I can, I believe that will happen. The, the loaf will break a loaf of bread and we'll have enough for everybody. 
everybody and 12 baskets left over. You know why? Because the word of God is true, my friend. Amen. It will never change. Amen. It is right Amen. on, and this is what we can take to the bank. Okay, so the ones that will be left are the redeemed, the reprobate, the resistors who are unsaved survivors, Jew and Gentile of the Great Tribulation, who refuse to worship the Antichrist. And Mike Bickle says it this way, you know, in Texas, there's, there's those, those that will not bow down to the Antichrist, but they're not going to bow down to Jesus either. But they're still going to be down there with their guns and their, and their uh, barbecue. And they are going to be like, I'm not worshiping Jesus, but I'm going to still be here. I'm just a resistor that they're going to come to Jesus. Okay. So now there's three stages of the second coming. And by the way, Texas barbecue is the best. Okay. <laughs> Almost. You got Alabama and you got Georgia. Kansas City is mm, primo. Okay. Okay. Stage one. Jesus' procession across the sky to rapture the church. Now, now we're going to be changed. How fast? In twinkling of an eye. But the rapture itself, it doesn't say the rapture is going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. It will, think about it. It will take time. Now, we're going to read the scripture that goes along with that. It's going to take time, though, because it says every eye on earth will see him. So you just think practically. This always used to bug me when Santa Claus was around. <laughs> I'm like, how is that even possible? But it will be possible with Jesus. Amen. I want you to think there was a counterfeit, yes. and, and that was the counterfeit. Yes. But Jesus is the real deal, and it's, he's not going to do it. And he's not just going to snap his finger and do it. It may, maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's two months. I don't know. But he's going to go all around the entire earth. Every eye will see him. And he will be close enough to the earth that they will mourn when they see him. Because they will go, this is real. This is more reality than than my heart can handle. That's what's going to be happening. Okay. I believe they'll feel his presence, huh? Yes, they will. Are they able to accept him at that time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Praise now, God. May I ask, this yes. might be a weird question, question, but the Holy Spirit's still here? Yes. The Holy Spirit cannot leave the planet. It's impossible. All life on earth, the scripture says, yes. all life on earth would cease to exist. No, but I mean like when... Oh, we're just being caught up. We're stuff. just we, caught up to be with him. So it's, and then he'll do his millennial reign. Yes. Okay, so yeah. I was thinking, like, where does the Holy, but the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit stays? Still yes. doing what he does. That's right. Because what is, what is the other scripture that says um, the earth and all of its substance, everything is upheld by the, by the word, word of his, his power. power. And if that, any of that, none of that can be removed. The Holy Spirit can't be oh, removed. So because okay, life on he earth would cease. Before he creates a new heaven. When it, the yeah. Heaven, the, but we still have a thousand years to go. So hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> okay. So. G okay. So the second coming procession will begin in the sky. With Jesus circling the earth on the clouds. As he raptures the church. Now on the clouds could be with the people. Because you know, have you ever heard? Oh, that's a cloud, cloud of people. Of the cloud of witnesses. The cloud of and or the think, angels. all the angels. Because it's going to look like the Heaven. glory of God. Now I want you to think what that's going to look like. We have no idea. Mm. But when we see it, are we going to be offended? No. Well, that's not what I thought was going to happen. I thought you were going to take me at, you know, this point in the ra in the tribulation. I thought, why did you leave me behind? Why didn't you come when I thought you would come? See, we can't be offended because it's his plan. It's his plan and it's his idea. And he has a great idea. Okay. So, Jesus, yes, it's his whole thing. Jesus' procession and then his, across the sky, across the land, three stages, and then into Jerusalem. And we're going to talk about it. Here we are, stage one. Jesus' procession across the sky to rapture the church. It says in Revelation 1, 7, it says, Behold, he's coming with clouds which is clouds of people, and every eye will see him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. The second coming procession begins in the sky with Jesus circling the earth on clouds as he raptures the church. Jesus will be seen by every eye of every person, believers and unbelievers. This will require a global procession over every inhabited place on earth, including each remote island. It's going to take time. The rapture will not be a secret event, but a dramatic event. That everyone on earth will see, not by TV or some vision, 
Oh, they're going to see this. They're going to see Jesus. You know, Jesus doesn't, Jesus can put on a show all by himself. <laughs> he doesn't oh, yeah. need TV. The rapture will be a process that takes time to complete. At what height and speed will Jesus travel so as to be recognized? We don't know. This procession across the sky requires that Jesus be bright enough and close enough and slow enough to be seen. Those who are not saved will be trying to figure out what is going on, but they'll be mourning because they'll realize, oh my goodness, I am I'm in trouble. I blew it. It must be convincing enough to cause hardened, not reprobate, unbelievers mm -hmm. to mourn. Because the hardened hearts, remember the reprobates, those are the ones that will never mm -hmm. bow they down mourn? to Jesus. Never. They will, ne they will mourn because they don't want this to happen. They don't want Jesus to return. Mm -hmm. They don't want him to rule and reign. But the but resistors could even... The resistors end. can, will, and will accept. There's many that will accept yeah. Jesus. I'm not saying all, but we believe many. Um, and this will be a great them. harvest. That's what we look forward to is yeah. this harvest. Okay, so in the stage two of this um, rapture event, the procession on the land descending to Mount Sinai in Egypt. Now, we always know that Jesus is going to come back to the Mount of Olives, right? We've heard that all the time. But I want you to consider... That Jesus, all we have to do is read Isaiah and realize that, what happened at Mount Sinai? Come on, Bible scholars, what happened? The, the, the law. Hold on, yeah, what? Ten Commandments. Yes, God cut covenant with Israel there. He said, you're my people. It was the very first Pentecost. There you go, there you go. Was Mount Sinai important? Yes. Mount Sinai was just as important to God. As Mount um, Zion. Zion, as the Mount of Olives, it's just as important. So, I want you to consider the Word of God, because the Word of God tells us this. Um, it says, the procession on the land descending to Mount Sinai, Egypt. This is the top of page 30. The Lord will ride on the cloud around the earth as he raptures the church. The Lord rides on a swift cloud. Rapture will come into Egypt, and that's from Isaiah 19. We could actually read the entire chapter of Isaiah 19, and you'd be shocked. Okay. Mike Bickle says, My view is that Jesus will descend from heaven to Mount Sinai, then march through parts of Egypt, then pass through the wilderness, then through Jordan, Edom, on his way to Jerusalem unto the Mount of Olives. The march progressively unfolds, including a series of events that could take two weeks or whatever. Jesus may start at Mount Sinai like Moses. Then go through parts of Egypt because he loves God loves Egypt. Manifesting his power as he delivers the captives of Israel only to return again to Mount Sinai with his, the Israelites after this is all over to dedicate themselves to God again in covenant. God is so merciful. At Sinai, Moses established the priesthood, the tabernacle, and it was the place that God betrothed himself to Israel. It's such an important place. In history, God loved Sinai. Okay. Um... They went through the wilderness on their way to Israel, led by signs and wonders. Jesus will come as the greater Moses, who will release the seven bowls of wrath, which are still to come after the seventh trumpet. Okay, the, the bowls of wrath are still to come, which are similar to Moses releasing the ten plagues on the earth. Moses, as a deliverer of Israel, gives us his prophetic picture of how the Lord will again deliver Israel. The miracles of Egypt will occur in the last days. So when Israel, Hosea says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt, I called my son. God will send Jesus as the Savior to Egypt. Egypt will be at war with the Antichrist. The whole world will be at war with the Antichrist. But especially Egypt and Israel, Jesus loves Egypt. And there's the scripture in Daniel, we won't take time to read right now, but we will read um, Isaiah. The Lord will rise up five cities in Egypt that make a vow to Jesus. Today I read all of um, Isaiah 18 and then all of 19. And I thought we could take time, but we won't tonight just because I, we have short time. But Isaiah 18 is talking about how God is calling Ethiopia back to himself. It's so precious because he says, look at her tall. She's tall and she has beautiful skin. And I will tell you, I, in, in uh, Sierra Leone, I had this Francis who was our cook and she was tall and beautiful and had, I thought she was in her 30s. She was my age, in my 50s. I was like, you have the most beautiful skin. Those, I tell you, those Ethiopians are beautiful. So we, um, we know that in that day, here's what 
just for the sake of time. Here's what Isaiah 19 says. It's on the sidebar. Let's read it. In that day, there will be five Egyptian cities that speak the language of Canaan. Now, what's the language of Canaan? Hebrew. Oh, Hebrew. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and swear their allegiance to the Lord Yahweh, commander of the angel armies, and one will be called the city of the sun. So his Jesus' procession, Yeshua's procession, will go through the land, through the Sinai wilderness, after the exodus from Egypt, the Lord marched with Israel through the wilderness as a prophetic picture of Jesus doing it in the end times as the greater Moses. Amen. Isn't that fantastic? If you read the whole of Isaiah, you get the, you get the full picture. But here's what Psalm 68 says. Let's read it together again. O oh Lord, it was you who marched in front of your people, leading them through the wasteland. The earth shook beneath your feet. The heavens filled with clouds before the presence of God of Sinai. The sacred mountain shook at the sight of the face of Israel. Now, now that you've read this, with this, what, it, what, got, what we just talked about in mind, Isaiah means something different now, doesn't it? And what Psalm just, what David was just talking about there, he's talking about this day when Jesus is going to walk through the earth like Moses did, but this time the earth is going to shake because of this Jesus, this Yeshua, who's coming back for his people. And I'm telling you, he's coming back with such purpose. It is going to be a day like no other day. It is going to shake people and shake. There it says their men's hearts will fail because they don't know what to do. Okay. This pattern will be repeated in the end times. So what Moses did will be repeated in the end times with Jesus, Yeshua, and again involve war with Edom. Jesus will initiate violence with his purpose in mind in, his, in this military conflict. Here's what De Deuteronomy 33 says. The Lord came down from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir, and he shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. Isn't that language, even in Psalms where it talked about uh, and the heavens were filled with clouds, it's not talking about clouds like you see in the sky. It's talking about the clouds of, a of angels, the clouds of people, the witnesses. Yes, brother. Can you identify what's happening now with one of the plagues that happened that was poured out during Pharaoh and Moses' time together? Can you identify uh, what's happening now with any of those plagues, those ten plagues? We don't. Right now, we're really just experiencing the birth pains. Because the, those things have, the, the seals have not been opened yet. Right. When the seals are open, and, and it's in your notes, so go backwards, go to the seals, and we, we tie that all with Exodus. So, and you'll, you'll see what, you know, there's going to be a plague of blood, just like there was in Egypt. And we're going to see that in the book of Revelation. It's going to happen again. Yeah. You know where it says that? All of, all of those. Locusts, flies, whatever. Frogs. It's Frogs. frogs <laughs> right? Why do we practice this every year at Passover? So we recognize so we it when it rehearsal. Really comes. It's rehearsal. It's to remind us. It's the only it's the only feast that we practice something that happened back in Exodus. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't God's plan so good? <laughs> right? So this year, next year, when we do Passover, I want you, when we settle down to do Passover, aren't you going to go, oh, <laughs> this has more meaning now, right? Oh, I'm going to put a drop of blood, right? Oh, for every one of these plagues, because they're going to happen again. We had a plague of flies this summer, and I'll take your question. We had a plague of flies this summer this year. I, it was awful. It was awful. So oh, I can't yeah, even I imagine. Man, I fought yeah. flies every day this summer. Yes. So on page 28, it says in Matthew 24, 27, For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the sun of man be. So is it, doesn't that kind of tell us how he is? So you're world? thinking fast, right? I don't know if it's like a day or if it's a mm -hmm. season or but. It says right there that it says the lightning come out of the east. As the lightning, let's see, as it, yeah, as it comes out of the east. So, um, 
How many of you have ever been in a, in a lightning storm and it does take a long time? I mean, there are lightning storms. And I, you know what? I think when Jesus comes back, we're going to see all kinds of heavenly wonders happening in the skies. And But it doesn't mean fast, necessarily. We've kind of oh, taken yeah. it as fast. I'm just wondering if it's kind of like, as it says, it's because, you know, the sun rises from the east right. and goes to the west. And that's like, what, a day? Right. But yeah, that would be what... 12 hours that way. But think about it. He's going to go around the entire planet. Yeah, so maybe it's a season. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> good, good thought. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it might not have, have to do with time. Oh. Because in Matthew... 29, he says the sun will be darkened, the moon will be darkened, and the stars will fall when he comes. So Mike Bickle explains yes. that God's turning off the lights yes. so that he will, and he will be shining brightly that's in exactly a dark right. sky. That's right. So that's the way a lightning is. That lightning flashes across a dark Excellent. sky. Excellent. Excellent. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's going to be, let me just say, it's going to be like nothing we've ever seen. Now, and let me say this. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show on earth. <laughs> Are you happy? I'm happy. Because I don't want it to be fast, actually. I want it to be... Oh, I want it to shake the earth. I want people to come to Jesus. Amen. I want it to be as slow as he wants it to be or as fast as he wants it to be. I want him to do this greatest show on earth, the best thing ever. I mean, when he came the first time, he was here for 33 years. He wasn't in a hurry. He was focused, right? And then when he actually, when he died, think about it. He died for three days. He died, was buried. He rose again. And then he stayed for 40 days. He hung out for a while. He hung out. He wasn't in a hurry. Okay? Yes. Maybe some people could see it and know the truth and then repent right there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we believe that. Yes. Yeah. That's a good thing. Isn't that, isn't that good? Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> they just knew. Yeah. And they with the change. That's good. That's Think really even of the thief, right? Can well, that's what, that's what Marcia just said. She said, think about it. Because on the cross, the thief saw and knew that was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And that was the one. And he said, You'll, I'll see you today in paradise. So, it's true. I believe it will happen quickly. And listen, my friends. How important is it that we get ready for this? Now, I don't want to put any guilt or any pressure. There's zero guilt, zero pressure. Because I will tell you, just like I told you about that 50-year prayer being answered. There was no preparation for that. I couldn't have been prepared for that, what was going to happen. I couldn't have been prepared for that family, other than just waiting, praying, like I always do, like I live my life. Sit down at a table, and a whole family comes to Jesus, and a whole extended family. Just like that. It's going to happen quickly, and I believe we're getting close to that. All right, Sister, yeah, oh, you had a question. Well, I'm a little confused because I... I I always thought rapture, Jesus was going to meet us in the clouds. Uh -huh. But you're saying it's going to, he's going to set foot on the earth? Not, the not at earth. first. At first, he's going to go. He's going. To, there's going to be a procession. Earth. Yeah, we see. We've always thought, Mary Lou. We've always thought that he's coming as fast as the lightning is from yeah. the west, like a flash of lightning, and we're all gone. Yeah. And everybody's on earth going, what just happened? And they're probably like. Good riddance, right? Thank God they're gone. I don't have to deal with that anymore. That's not it. Jesus is going to confront the world. Now, if, when he appears, then you see, everybody will see him, but I'm thinking, well, time change, this country is such and such a time, this, and that's why he's going to be here for a while during his rapture period. Right. So it could, but we're not we, all going to see him at the same time. Right. It won't all be at the same time, but it will. It, we don't have to worry. It's going to happen. <laughs> it is going to happen. And we don't have to be jealous of anyone who goes first because we will be there at the right time. All right. Good thoughts. Is that it's different than what we were taught, but it's, it's better. Than what we were taught, honestly. I love this plan. I think it's so much better. 
Because Jesus is going to confront the world. I don't want Jesus to go away. And then the world to go on like it is now? Or like no. you don't want him separated from him for eternity. No. No. Jesus loves this planet. He created it. And I would, every person. And every person. That he not only created them, he hung personally on the cross for them. That's right. So he's yeah. invested in it. He is invested in this planet. He created. I mean, we know what it's like when we create something and we're invested. Or like our children. We love, we didn't create our children, but we had, you know, we have an investment in our children. I don't want to just, you know, he's like, I'm not going to throw that away. I'm not just going to leave that and not stop what's happening right now. I think over the last two years, most of us have woke up like never before and learned some of the evil that is actually happening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Things that we couldn't conceive because we don't think like that. I don't think like a thief. I don't think like a murderer. I don't think like somebody who worships the Satan outright, mm -hmm. hates God, worships Satan. I don't think like that. So I don't think of those things because they're demonic thoughts. I participate with Jesus. I'm thinking good thoughts. And I'm like, when they tell me what they, they're, and I'm like, that's impossible. Who would do those things? He came to save us from sin. He didn't come to save us from the Romans. Like <laughs> when he came back the first time. Right. And he, he's now, he's, uh, he well, came he, to save us from sin Exactly. Now, and he didn't come to save us from the kingdoms, the day, the yeah, the present-day system. Day system. Roman, and and Roman right now, Roman. we are under we are under the Babylonian system mm -hmm. that has been in place since Cain killed Abel. Mm -hmm. We are under that wicked system. Mm -hmm. And Jesus talked about it. He said, don't go the way of Cain. <coughs> don't go down Cain's... Don't go to that system. But we are in it, and there's no way we can't be... Uh, affected by it or participate in it we go to the grocery store we buy money you look at our money mm -hmm. read all those things on our money mm -hmm. and you know we are in a babylonian system mm -hmm. there's no denying it okay but jesus said i come i'm gonna come and i'm gonna i'm gonna destroy that Hallelujah. yay because that's what he was that's what the disciples were saying when are you going to set up your kingdom and jesus is like hang on there's another mountain and I'm going to return on that second mountain, and I'm going to then I'm going to set up my kingdom. So when we do millennial reign, I'm telling you, it's going to be good. Okay, if this is good, just wait. We're going to, it's going to get better. Okay, Hallelujah. let's get to a place where we are going to stop. Okay, Jesus will march from Egypt. Wait, where did I stop? Sidebar after Exodus. Jesus will march. In, I think we're down in the middle. The in middle. Jesus, Jesus, will Jesus will march from, from Egypt, Egypt, which yeah. includes the yeah. Sinai wilderness, Paran, Mount Seir through Jordan. And then here's what Habakkuk says. It is an amazing that you cannot get all your teaching from the last days from any one book. You can't get it all from Revelation. But here we are in Habakkuk of all books. Glory to God. <laughs> God came from Teman in southern Edom, the holy one from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens. We're talking about Jesus and his return. Yes. His glory is going to cover the heavens. This has not happened in our in our lifetime or in the in the history. Never. The earth was full of his praise because we're going to be down here yes. going, Glory! Here he comes yes. before yes. him with the pestilence and fever, pestilence and plague followed at his feet. The land of Midian trembled. The Arabian desert reached to into South Sinai Peninsula. You marched through the land in indignation. You trampled the nations in your anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people. Mount Paran is the Sinai Peninsula, 30 miles south of the Dead Sea. From Mount Sinai to Israel, it's 165 miles. This is an 11-day journey traveling with flocks. Um, Modern-day Paran is at or near Mecca. Mecca's coming to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Procession on the land through Jordan. Isn't that going to be amazing? They're going to say, wait a minute, there's nothing in that box. Here comes this Jesus in the sky. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus will march through the city of Basra and Edom, Jordan, and Teman, killing his enemies on his way to Jerusalem. Here's what Isaiah 63 says. Who is this coming from Basra? Who is this? Coming from Basra in Edom, he is Edom. He is dressed in garments of bright scarlet. In other words, blood, 
robes in garment dyed bright red with blood, marching like a champion with his great power and might. It is I. I am the one who announces righteousness. I am mighty and ready to save. Can you wait till this happens? I'm telling you, I want you to think about how how people in Sinai or how in in um, Saudi Arabia, I want you to think about what just happened in Afghanistan. I want you to think what's happening in Jordan. I Listen, my friends, we won't pray unless we know how bad it is. So I'm going to tell you how bad it is. Those women can't live in those countries. They can't walk outside their houses without being whipped. My God. Mercilessly. They can't uncover their face. That's worse than a dog. We got to pray. By the way, our missionary who we sent $2,000 from this place. Thank you guys for just joining in. They have rescued hundreds and hundreds of people out of Afghanistan. Glory to God. So we just say thank you, Lord. But I'm telling you, my friends, it's so awful. It's so awful in those nations right now. Because they don't serve Jesus. They don't serve a God of love. They serve a God who hates. And that God tells them demonic things. You know, treat your women like dogs. Treat your women worse than dogs. He's coming as a righteous judge. He is. And so when you think about him coming through the land and the land shaking, I want you to think about those ones who have been wicked and doing evil things. Jesus is coming after that. That's right. He's going to set it straight. Yes, he is. And it's not just the women. It's the children. It's the little girls. God help us. Okay. Amen. We can't cover up our eyes and say it's not happening. We have to know how bad it is so we will get out of our stupor, our slumber, and our, our way of just saying, oh, it's just over there. No, my friends. No, my friends. It is right now. We just agree with heaven. We agree with heaven. Amen. And we say, Lord, we know that you are dealing right now in Afghanistan. Yes, You're dealing in all of these nations that are dealing and suffering these horrible things. We thank you. God, we pray for the women and the children. We pray, God, that you will keep them in places of safety. We ask, God, that you will give men, righteous men, the strength and the backbone to protect these children and these women in Jesus' name and that the evil will stop. And there's more to say on that, but I won't say it. I, you look it up if you need to know, but can I say pray? We must pray. We for justice. Must pray. justice. For justice. That's exactly right. Okay, we're almost to the end. Uh, Mount Paran, let's go down to the procession on the land through Jordan. Um, Jesus will march through, oh, like a champion. Never mind, we already read clear to the bottom. I did want to read this excerpt on the side. That's Isaiah 34. It says, Lord Yahweh has a judgment sword dripping with blood, dripping with the blood of lambs and goats, a great slaughter in the land of Egypt. Their land will be drenched with blood for the Lord Yahweh has a day of vengeance. A year That's of vindication right. for Zion's cause. Hallelujah. Can I say that Jesus is going to set everything straight? Yes. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those ones who have done things proudly and acted wicked, wickedly yes. for decades, for hundreds of years, are all of a sudden going to begin to shake and tremble because mm -hmm. they're going to see this Jesus, this true God, this one mm -hmm. true God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they are, it's, he's going to set it straight. And we, we think, well, Lord, it'd be nice if I were vindicated someday, right? But just wait till he begins to vindicate some of these people mm -hmm. who have been so horrifically treated, mm -hmm. right? That's what we want. God, vindicate these people. Vindicate yeah. them. The ones, these blessed, precious ones. Like Let's, Joseph. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Vindication. That's why Jesus said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Can I tell you that Jesus will vindicate each and every one? Those of you who are suffering, listen, Jesus is going to vindicate you. And it will be the best. That's why you can say that when I was going through that time of betrayal over and over, I'd say, Lord, I will not take any action because I know that you Amen. will vindicate me. And I Amen. said that a million times. It seemed like a million times I said that. But I did. I said it until I believed it. <laughs> that, there's the thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, say it till you believe it because, you know, you, you don't feel it. I, was, I wasn't just, I was saying things that I didn't feel. But I knew they were true. 
And mm -hmm. if you say the truth long enough, at some point you'll go, okay, now I feel that and I believe it like and Mike I forgive Bickle, them. <laughs> as Mike Bickle pray, said, unanointed prayer is relevant. You just keep praying. You just keep, you just keep saying amen. what God gives you. And you kind of walk yourself right into the anointing. That is excellent. That That's is excellent. Bickle. I, I agree with that because yes. even when you forgive someone, how many of you, when you first forgive somebody, they come to you and say, I'm so sorry I did that. You're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if they've been really mean, you know, right? Forgiveness is a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. And you make it's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. That's right. Choose no matter what, I forgive you even if I don't. Feel like Even it. if I don't feel like it. And and listen, when you do that, let me say, there's a reward that's yes. eternal. <laughs> we, you know, it's, I, I, whenever I'm looking at somebody and trying to forgive something, I will a lot of times say, Lord, show me what they're like as a child so that I can forgive them like a child. Because it's, it's an immature, yeah, yeah. they've got something immature in their heart that is lashing out. And, and just help me remember who they are. They're, they, they're, they don't have the maturity to understand what's going on right now, but they are lashing out at me and help me to do it like you would want me to do. Like Amen. you want me to handle this how you, want, how you want me to. And I may not feel it, but I'm going to say it until I do feel it. Amen. Because when I say it over and over, when I say, Lord, I do forgive them. Um, we just had somebody die. And, I, and I, this morning I spent time repenting. Lord, if there was anything that I had any feelings because guess what they're in heaven they know it all now <laughs> right they know all our thoughts they know everything and i thought lord if there's anything that i didn't do to push them toward jesus more or if i stopped them in any way from fulfilling their call lord i repent right now and i because i don't want that and i forgive them if they did anything i forgive it it's done it's, i don't have anything i don't lay any sin at their feet like stephen said and when we do that, whether we feel it or not, the Lord right. hears us, yeah. yes. and we make that conscious decision, that choice, and it is established. It's established. <laughs> and sometimes we have to say it again. If it comes, keeps coming back, you have to, sometimes you have to say it again, right? Just say it until it becomes like it's at peace. You're at peace with peace. it. Yes. Okay? It's about the intent of the heart. Excellent. Right? Your intent of the heart That's is right. forgiven. That's where the it's when we, that's exactly right. The thoughts and the intents of the heart. And it, I don't know, I can't explain it other than the peace of God that passes yes. all understanding falls down upon that. And it's all Amen. of a sudden like justified. We're, we are all on the same level. It's covered with the blood of Jesus. It's all good. Hallelujah. And that's what we want, right? That's Amen. what we want. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just read a couple more scriptures and then we're going to stop because the blood on his robes is really quite fasc fascinating. Why are your robes so red? This is the top of page 32. Like those of the tre those treading grapes. I've been treading in the wine press alone. This is Jesus talking. Here we are in Isaiah. Isaiah is so good. I've been treading in the wine press alone, and there was no one there from the nations to help me. I stomped on the nations in my anger and trampled them down in my wrath. Their blood soaked my clothing and stained all my robes, for the day of vengeance was in my heart. And the time for my redeeming work had come. I looked, but there was no one to help me. I was amazed, and there was no one to support me. So my own power accomplished salvation, and my wrath sustained me. But listen, God is mad. God is angry. There is some, there is things he sees. He sees happening on this earth, and I'm telling you, he's angry. He, he withholds his anger. He withholds his wrath for this day. And this day, he's going to let it rip. <laughs> Glory to God. And Amen. we're going to stand by and go, you go, Jesus. <laughs> right? You do it. Because he, it's his right. He paid for it with his blood. Amen. Okay. Thank you for your blood, so I trampled, verse 6, I trampled down the nations in my anger. And I shattered the, in my fury and spilled their blood on the ground. Their blood will be on his robes. Lord Yahweh has a judgment sword dripping with blood, dripping with the blood of the lambs and goats, a great slaughter. We just read that. So let's go down. Jesus did not get his blood, get this blood on him by descending from the sky to the Mount of Olives. Do you see where we've kind of had a, miss, a mistake there? He didn't get the blood from the Mount of Olives, but he's going to start at Mount Seir and he's going to tromp through the land and he's going to begin to bring justice to Israel. 
Hallelujah. Who has been, who has, what nation has been more persecuted than any other nation? Israel. And he's coming there first. Yeah. Isn't that good? Uh, that Absolutely. gives me peace. Um, Jesus' procession into Jerusalem is the final battle, battle for the city of Jerusalem. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city will be taken. Half the city shall go into captivity. Now, the Israelites know this is going to happen. They know they're going to go into captivity. They're preparing for it. It's very interesting what's happening there because it was the most shut down nation. I thought of every nation, but I think maybe Australia may have surpassed that, at least parts of Australia and New Zealand. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. In that day, remember when it says in that day, we're talking about future, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two, making a very large valley. Then you shall flee to the mountains, my mountain valley. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. Thus says the Lord, my God will come. All the saints, see, we're with him. We're with him. All the saints with him. Okay, and then we'll do the final stage of the rapture let's do it next week all right then we won't hurry through it we'll talk about it and we'll enjoy it because it's going to be a good thing <laughs> we just uh, you know what we can't wait until that day when the rapture takes place